uncle will be returning at any moment. Good. Then that'll give me a chance to wish him a Merry Christmas as well. You know his feelings about Christmas, Master Tom. I dare say all of London knows his feelings about Christmas, Tom. It's the same thing each and every year. I'll ask for the day off so that I might spend it with my family. And how is your family, Bob? They're quite well. Your loving wife and Tiny Tim? As well as can be expected, Master Tom. Why, just the other day as I was carrying Tim on my shoulders. He still has trouble walking. Yes, I'm afraid he does so. But bless his soul, he never complains. No, I suppose not. He's a good lad. He misses the ice sliding with the others, but he's a masterful snowball maker. I venture to say that he's the best in London. I venture? He is a very good lad. Listen, Bob, I just happen to have something here. A taste of Christmas cheer. Fine old cherry. Oh, no, Master Thomas, I must Come along, you're Bob. Uncle wouldn't object to just a little taste, not this once. Tis the season, you know. Mr. Scrooge has very strict rules about I this. I know. Thing. I'll never know the difference. <laughs> just this once. Well, perhaps. <laughs> That's the spirit. It'll keep out the cold. Now, where's a suitable glass? You know, it'd probably mellow the old man himself to have a dram or two once in a while. <laughs> Here we go. Let's do a proper job of this. Here's to the merriest Christmas ever. We'll need another. It's that cold in here. I, I really mustn't, Master Tom. This will be the last for now. <laughs> we'll just answer from a distance. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, Bob, it is dreadfully cold in here. You're going to catch your death. <laughs> Master Tom, you really mustn't. Your uncle will. sticks. Even my Uncle Ebenezer can't begrudge a man in his employ the necessities of life. He will be terribly angry about this. Just tell him that I was here and that I insisted he at least got for shelter from the cold and dank in this dingy office. I dare say it's warmer in the poorhouse than it is in here. Ah! What are you doing here? This is a place of business, not a public house. Get away with you, get away! Well, I might have known. My nephew Thomas, a fan of ne'er do wells, blocky behaviors. Merry Christmas, Uncle Humbug. A very merry Christmas, Uncle Humbug, I say. A very, very merry Christmas, Uncle. Enough! Take your gaggle of street urchins elsewhere. Perhaps your singing will warm the ears of those a little further down the boulevard. We have better things to do with our time in this establishment. Isn't that so, Cratchit? Well, isn't it? Oh, yes, certainly, Mr. Scrooge. I hope so. <laughs> now, nephew, you're quite finished wasting our time, please collect your cohorts and leave us to finish out the rest of the business day without the dubious benefit of musical accompaniment. I'm certain that it will do me no good, but I am stalwart to the end. I promised Belle that I would invite you to dinner tomorrow. We are having Christmas supper. We'd be delighted if you'd be able to attend, although I must warn you, some of the cohorts you encountered outside, they may also be there. You surprised me, Thomas. I would have thought that any son of my sister's would have been more frugal. You can ill afford to be entertaining your salary, I'll be bound. Ah, we are resourceful, Uncle. You see, we all join together to provide the feast. We all bring along a little something, and before you know it, the table is full of good things to eat, and our glasses are charged with Christmas cheer. I dare say. And I would guess that more than enough has been charged to the local grocer as well. You won't dampen my mood, Uncle. Not even if you cloud up into a great thunderhead of doom and gloom. Ooh, whatever happened to Bah Humbug, I wonder. Stop that infernal noise! Stop it! Take this rabble away from here, nephew, or I shall be forced to call a constable. <coughs> Very well, Uncle. And I would wish you a Merry Christmas all the same. Uh, <coughs> and a Happy New Year. Humbug! <laughs> oh, that's oh, foolery, that's what it is. <laughs> Wandering about the streets, annoying people with a lot of catawalling. Same thing every year. What's this then? Some more of my nephew's idea of good business practice, I suppose. It, it's just a little sherry, sir. Master Tom thought that because Master Tom, is it? Is Master Thomas your employer then? 
closely. What am I, the janitor here? Leave your premises to collect the rents. Upon my return, I find that my celebrated nephew has taken over the business. Not only that, but he has decided to abandon protocol in favor of the consumption of alcohol during business hours. No doubt he thinks this practice will enhance the accuracy of your entries in the ledger. I'm certain that he meant no harm, Mr. Meant Smith. no harm. <clears throat> no harm, indeed. The road laid to perdition is paved with good intentions. Many an honest man has had his purse stolen while kneeling to help another to his feet. Yes, sir. Easy greeting, gentlemen. Permit me to introduce myself. I am Mrs. Douglas Lane of Malcolm, Brigand and Lane. At your service. State your business. Well, we have Malcolm, Brigand and Lane. The door, Mrs. Lane. The door? Yes. The oh, door, yes. Mrs. Lane. Close oh, yes. it. The door. <laughs> well, as I was saying, we have Malcolm, Brigand and, and Lane. Lane. Yes, yes. Tell me, do I have the pleasure of speaking to Mr. Marley or Mr. Scrooge? Of Scrooge and Marley. You're addressing Mr. Scrooge. Jacob Marley died a year ago. Oh. This is Cratchit, my clerk. I see. Do you? <laughs> well, I am here on behalf of the poor and the destitute who are in dire need of our support during the Christmas holidays. The, the winter, the harshness of the winter has only exasperated their condition. Many of them do not even have the necessities for life. They have no homes, no, ch no clothing, no food. Some even have little children who will not survive if we do not find it in our hearts to help them. Now, our brotherhood will see that your money is put to good use. How much can I put you down for? Nothing. Nothing? Nothing. Good sir. I said nothing. What? Your affliction. Is your hearing impaired? No, my, my hearing is perfect. But perhaps there is a language barrier there. <laughs> I assure you that... No, I assure you, ma'am. I reply to your request with a negative. Nothing, as in none. In all my years, I never had... Never what? I've never seen a man that was not to be bent by the whining and groveling of the lazy and misbegotten. Or perhaps you have never had the abject pleasure of meeting an individual who refuses to carry those who will not walk. There are those, sir, who cannot walk. So be it. Let me ask you this. Are there no workhouses? Are there no prisons? Of course there are. They're filled to overflowing, more's the pity. And they will die there if they don't die in the streets and the alleys. The city is crowded with them. Very well, then. If they are want to die, let them do so and decrease the surplus population. Sir. There are no buts about it, madam. You may put me down for nothing, and there's an end to it. I would hope, sir, that you never <coughs> find yourself in need. Not likely, madam. For as you can see, I do not waste my money on hopeless causes. Now, if you will be good enough, this enterprise is not run on charity. There's work to be done here, and the hour is going late. I'm very sorry for the intrusion. So am I. May I wish you a Merry Christmas? Wish me anything you want. Just be done with it. Don't tempt me, sir. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> you have an affliction. What? <laughs> Good evening. May I wish you a Merry Christmas? Merry Christmas. Fine thing. Look at the time. Standing about a place of business discussing the plight of beggars and vagabonds. All right, all right. I suppose there's nothing for it, Cratchit. Yes, Mr. Scrooge. Time, Mr. Cratchit. Time. Yes, sir. Tomorrow is Christmas. Yes, sir, I know. I suppose you'll be wanting the day off then. Oh, yes, sir. If I may, sir, that is, if it's all right. It isn't all right. Yes, sir. But I suppose there's nothing that can be done for it. It yes, seems sir. to me to be a fine state of affairs when a man is allowed to pick another's pocket every 25th of December. Yes, sir. Yeah. Miss 
suppose you'll be wanting the whole day off as well. Oh, Mr. Scrooge, if I may, sir. Well, it would do me little good to have you about after half of the day is celebrated. <laughs> By the way, my nephew seems to have started you out. I'll be fortunate enough to see you back at your desk next day as it is. Yes, sir. You agree with me, then? Oh, no, sir. I, I mean, yes, sir, about the yeah, show. Yeah, I've gone your head already. <laughs> Never mind. Just see to it that you are here all the earlier the next day. Oh, Mr. Scrooge. Oh, Mr. Scrooge, thank you very much, sir. Well, get out then. If you're all that anxious to go, then go. Yes, sir. Good night then, Mr. Scrooge, and may I wish... And what, Cratchit? Good night, Mr. Scrooge, sir. Good night, sir. Yes, Tim. Can we 
you mean toy show in the star? Of course you can. Then I'd like to make a wish. And what would that wish be, my friend? I would wish that every boy could have fun just to make me My.
What you see before you is the embodiment of an agony. The very essence of suffering. Yes, I can see that, Jacob. You see nothing, Ebenezer. But Jacob. Nothing, Ebenezer. You are blind. You see nothing beyond your ledgers and your account books. You see only your financial gain, your gnarled fingers before your eyes, grasping and picking away at the lives of others. Jacob, we, we, we were only men of business. Business? Yes. The welfare of mankind should have been our business. Charity and understanding should have been our business. The future of the world should have been our business. But Jacob, we must make a living. A living? By draining the life's blood from others. I have only done that which is within the law. There is not a record within our business history that reflects anything other than accepted protocol. Business. History. Protocol. Is that what you would have, then? That history should go on repeating itself? Would you leave a path of ruined lives for a roadway for your successes? I believe in sound business practices. <laughs> business practices. Do you believe in what you see before you? I see before me an, an apparition. An apparition? Yes. You must be. That, that must be it. Of course, I, I've dozed off and snoring in my chair at this very moment, and, and you are a, a blot of mustard, a bit of undigested beef. Uh -huh. my, my nephew Sherry, that's what you are. Uh -huh. Silence! Oh my God, for heaven's sakes, have mercy, spirit, please. Uh, Silence, please. Ebenezer! Oh, please, please, have me. I said silence. Now, do you believe in me or not? Yes, Spirit. I, I believe. I, I believe. Then hear me, Ebenezer. These chains I wear, I forged it from its first link to its last. The stuff from which it is made are the bonds I use to enslave others. Now it binds me. See the craftsmanship of it? See how carefully one link closes over the next? There are no weaknesses in it. And its weight, it has a ponderous weight, Ebenezer. It must be heavy, Jacob. Heavy with the transgressions of a lifetime. A lifetime? And yours was twice this length a year ago. Mine. And weightier than by three than this. By three. By three. <laughs> but you need not wear it. If you but do as I say. As you say. <laughs> of course, Jacob. Only tell me what it is that I must do. You will be visited by three spirits. Three? Three spirits, Jacob. And you must endure them all. They will come to you one at a time. But can't I have them all at once and be done with it? Silence! <laughs> the first will come to you when the clock strikes one. The second when the clock strikes two. And the third when the clock strikes three. What am I to do? What will they do to me? The first will come to you when the clock strikes one. Jacob, who are these spirits? What do they want of me, Jacob? I must leave you now, Ebenezer. My time here is spent. Remember me and what I have told you. Endure the three spirits and heed what they have to show you. Free yourself from an eternity in chains. Jacob. Jacob.
foretold to me. His has. And of those who are to follow. Each in their turn, Ebenezer. Come to lift the veil, the veil that cloaks your mind. Ah, you need not fear me. It will not harm you. I have come to show you what has already transpired. I have come to show you yourself in an earlier time. A time when life is new and exciting to a young apprentice. Oh, Mr. Pezziwig, let's try that punch. I have the punch. Oh, I just love this time of year.
done with business people, and some are as concerned with their business practices as they should be. I know it will not be easy, Lydia, but I feel I must give it a try. Very well. We'll be married and go to London. That's just it, Lydia. I don't... So that's... What are you afraid of me? You can go to London where the times are more fashionable. Company more sophisticated. It isn't that. Is it necessary for you to explain yourself any further? It's quite simple. You've made up your mind that there is more for you in London than there is for you here. How many people do have that differently? After all, you're a qualified clerk now. Who knows what the future holds for you? Why, you may become the proprietor of a large establishment. Who knows? You may even go into business for yourself. Lydia, please. I'm glad I found out your true nature in time. I don't even know you, Ebenezer. I thought... Never mind what I thought. It's obvious I have been wrong about a lot of things. It was wrong to think he really cared for me. It was wrong of me to think he loved me. But I do. I do care for you. Care for me. Yes. I said love, Ebenezer.
off. What time is it? What's happening to me? I forgot that I was back at Hezegate. <laughs> Good Lord, that was years ago. Oh, my neck. I must have slept on it. My legs. I can't be dozing in a chair half the night. What kind of condition will I find myself in? Wait, wait. Wait, wait a moment. It's as Molly said. I've been visited by a spirit. I'm to be visited by another before the night is out. Two more, in fact. True! <laughs>
for a moment near the park. It was such a clear night. There really was no need to worry. You always say that, but I worry just the same. Christmas star. Hmm. Neither one of you should have been out any longer than need be. It's that cold. I'm sorry, dear. We just didn't notice. We both made wishes on the star, Mama. Really? And just what did you wish for? An astro to tell. They say that if you tell your wish, it doesn't come true. Isn't that so, Tim? That's right. I only really hope my wish was true. I don't suppose you wish for an increase in your salary, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> no, dear. Nothing like that. I wouldn't do you much good if you did. Not with the way Mr. Scrooge hangs on to his money. Dear heart, please, you mustn't not tonight. Oh, well, really, Bob. It's been ever so long since Mr. Scrooge has given you a raise. The prices keep going up. We can barely get along on what we have. Some of us if he continues in this way. Surely he knows we can't last much longer on the little he pays you. But he does the best that he can do. I don't believe it. I know that that's what he tells you, but I just don't believe it. My dear, do you think he is lying to us? Is that what you think? I think you should look for employment elsewhere. That's what I think. <coughs> fortunate to have this position. Every day I see others walking the streets. These truly are difficult times. We are very lucky, and we should be grateful for what we have. Oh, I am grateful, Bob. It's just that I don't think that Mr. Scrooge is. Now, dear heart, please, it's Christmas. Let's not spoil the evening. memory serves me correctly. It's right about now that you offer Tim and me a hot cup of Christmas punch. Isn't that so? Oh, Bob, you are the eternal optimist. Very well. The punch has been ready and waiting. Mm -hmm. Just the thing we need, my love. Some Christmas cheer to keep out this cold. Grandpapa? Yes, sir. May I have the cinnamon sticky? Of course. Dear. Dearest, a cinnamon stick for my young companion, if you please.
I never realized. There's a lot you haven't realized, Bruce. Some would call it ignorance. As you can see, it is all around us. Spirit. You would see that. See. Seen that you what? <clears throat> that you might have been a little cold hearted? Why, no, Mr. Scrooge. You're the very picture of generosity. You're the pillar of benevolence. And compassionate. Why, my man, you are the very soul of compassion. Don't be shy. Just bring it here. 
Let me see what you have got. Come closer, closer. I have treasure, Mr. Sleeve. This one's yeah. also taken. We even had a fine beaded bag technique for small of his back. You are the resourceful one, Sleeve. You are. Uh, just got to it for the rest of Never you. mind that. Let's have it here. A fine old watch. Let me see uh, that. Solid gold. It's solid gold, ain't it? Plate, perhaps. I'll see what I can fetch for it, Mommy. Look, solid gold to me. Shut up. What would you know of solid gold? Did it none of them have to press it to mine to look under his shirt? Hand oh, it over. Oh, the gold shirt, huh? Uh, perhaps. Now, my pretties, let's have a look at the larger merchandise. Look behind Harry Taylor's trousers. And Grace is smack. Look here, fine draperies in the great man's apartment. Here, look at this with Irish lace, a candlestick, and some pure knickknacks. <laughs> Some silverware. I don't suppose you'll be doing much entertaining in the foreseeable future. <laughs> very good, very good, my little girl of gifted graspers. He is high, lifting high in real estate. So it was no one there. There was no one to come view the body. Did you see those gentlemen as they were coming down from the snow? <laughs> Prominent men of business they was. Passing, passing of a colleague. Hardly, sir. Were you acquainted with the deceased? Um, we had a northern relationship. I understand it was last so. Oh, pardon me, sir, but I couldn't help but overhear. Quite all right. <laughs> it's just that I heard that if he was a man of substance, well, he kept it to himself. Stingy was he. Quite. <laughs> Some would say so, yes. Perhaps to a fault. <laughs> Is there to be a service? It would be a cursory affair at the local rectorate. Well, there's food. <laughs> I wouldn't think of attending if there wasn't really food, sir. If I were to attend, I must be fed. Quite right. Be a It's the only there. reason I would be there. <laughs> <laughs> After all, the man meant nothing to me. I mean, they think anyone would shoot me. Well, it would seem that he at least had a few possessions that will go to a good cause. After all, charity begins at home, and that's right where you were able to find it, was it not? Certainly was. Yeah. Yeah. All right, then, away with you. Old Sleeve will take it from here. We'll meet back here after I've had a chance to put our wares on the open market. I doubt that anyone will come looking after the stolen possessions of an old skin flint <laughs> such as this one. Now get out! Get out, all of you!
Merry Christmas! <laughs> ah, the Cratchits! Tiny Tim. Yes, indeed. Tiny Tim. <laughs> I wonder, <laughs> well, I wonder if Mrs. Lane of Malcolm Briggerton Lane will be surprised to see me tomorrow morning. <laughs> Yes, I dare say she <laughs> Mr. Scrooge, Mr. Scrooge, sir. <laughs> yes, boy, yes, my boy. I'm up here, up here at the window. Mr. Scrooge? Yes, my boy! It's done, sir. The goose is being delivered. Oh, excellent! <laughs> Most efficient, boy! <laughs> there is a bit of a difficulty, though, sir. Difficulty? Yes, sir. And what is that, my boy? Mr. Hardwick, at the butcher shop, sir. Yes. He asked if you might come down to the shop. Verify the purchase, sir. You see, well, he says it's quite unusual for you to be, that is, for a man of your reputation. <laughs> it's, it's quite all right, my boy. I, I understand completely, but uh, you see, I'm not quite the same man I was. Sir? Never you mind, my lad. I'll be right down to accompany you to the shop. Just wait there. I'll only be half a tick. <laughs> oh, I am a new man. By the saints alive, I have not felt this young in 30 years. <laughs> Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! <laughs>
Yes, sir. It was the most splendid Christmas ever. Is that so? Yes, sir. <laughs> I see. If it was sent by someone who's lost their mind, well, God bless them just the same. Perhaps by someone who's found it. Forgive me, sir. <laughs> confound it, Cratchit. I say confound it. Is there no work to be done here today? Have you decided to jeopardize your situation here? Oh, no, sir. No, sir. <clears throat> yeah. That's better. Speaking of your present situation, I have been considering your salary. My salary, sir? Yes, your salary. How, how long have you been in my employ? I've been with yourself and Mr. Marley for 11 years in February, sir. Mm -hmm. 11 years in February? Really? Yes, sir. <laughs> And, uh, do you feel that these past ten years, nearly ten months, have been spent profitably? Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> and have you gained in your knowledge during your time invested here at Scrooge and Marley? Oh, most certainly, sir. And do you feel that you are now in possession of enough experience to seek employment elsewhere? I, I don't understand. Oh, 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 would you say that, as a matter of fact, that you might have even come to a position in your life well, you might do better in an office of your own. Oh, no, sir. I'm very satisfied. Right here. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Oh, one should never become so subject to routine that they overlook their own potential, Bob. You're still a young man. Oh, you are bright. Clever. The world is much wider than these four walls. Who knows what might be waiting just outside that door. But, Mr. Scrooge, I'm content with my position here, <coughs> sir. Are you quite sure, Bob? Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> when I was a younger man, Cratchit, I had an opportunity to, to strike out on my own, to spread my wings. I could have remained where I was, secure within the company. But I changed all that. <laughs> I left a good deal behind to venture out. To venture out on my own. Mr. Scrooge, I assure you, sir, I'm quite satisfied and content to remain right here. Humbug. Mr. Scrooge, please, sir. Now, humbug, I say, Cratchit, humbug. You may be content to remain here, but uh, I have something to the contrary in my view. To, to the contrary, sir? Oh, yes, to the contrary, Cratchit. I will not have you remain here as my employee. But, Mr. Scrooge, sir, I've invested nearly 11 years here, sir, at Scrooge and Marley. You said so yourself, sir. Exactly. Therefore, I am terminating your position as my employee. <laughs> I am instead asking you to become my full partner. <laughs> Let's have your hand on it. <laughs> now, what's up? 
now it's better to you. Scrooge and Cratchit or Cratchit and Scrooge. Scrooge and Scrooge. Well, by Jove, I would never have thought it possible. I suppose it's all true. You are a truly amazing man, Uncle. Thomas, my boy. Now let me see, could it be that in the middle of our party, when there came a knock upon the door, that the delivery persons, with their arms filled to overflowing, had been sent to our doorstep by the very same uncle who resides in these dingy offices? Nay, nay, I said. Gifts from a skin flint such as he? Never. <laughs> and I was wrong. Wrong as ever I could be. They were gifts for all, finery and feast alike. Never have I seen such plenty. The food, the wine. My uncle wine, my mind. <laughs> Merry Christmas, nephew. Uncle, this is wonderful. You don't know what this means to me. That's all I can say is that this change of heart is the best of all Christmas gifts. Merry Christmas, uncle. And God bless you. Thank you, my boy. And Bob, Merry Christmas to you. And to you, Merry Christmas, Master Tom. Uh, pardon me, nephew, but uh, <laughs> Mr. Cratchit might be a more appropriate manner in which to address my new partner. <laughs> new partner? <laughs> well, my Joe, this is a wonderful Christmas. Congratulations, Bob. And about time, I might add. Uh, Thank uh, you, Master Tom. Well, now that the time for gift giving is at hand, I can contain myself no more. I have come to your offices this afternoon, Uncle, to deliver a gift I'm sure you would never have expected in a thousand years. But if you'll just stand <coughs> over here. Here, for all the 